right, so today we're uh, cleaning up after the storm. We got about, I don't know, probably six inches of heavy wet snow and then uh, a lot of freezing rain and ice. So uh, <laughs> we thought we had the driveway ready for the winter. And if, uh, if you take a look around, you'll see that I guess we obviously didn't because, well, we can get in and out. Nothing is down. All the stuff that's down I got rid of yesterday when I plowed. But um, if I don't cut these trees now, they're going to all end up in the driveway later this winter. It's my experience that once a tree is bent over at a 90 degree angle to the ground, even once the snow and every, all the weight comes off in it, it's not going to stand back up. It might if it was if it was spring starting tomorrow, maybe you know, because it would get a good dose of the sun and maybe stand up some. But once those fibers are pulled against each other like this, the damage is pretty much done. And uh, I'd a lot rather cut these now when there's only six inches of snow in the woods back where the tree is, than I would wait till the snow is crotch deep and be wallowing around out there with a chainsaw. So in the interest of safety, I'm going to cut some of these down now while I can and get rid of them. So we thought we might make a little video about that and maybe show you how to cut some spring poles. A lot of people don't know there's a safe way to cut those without risking your life. And uh, some people may not know about that. So we're going to start off with some of these other big ones and then we'll, we'll work into some of the spring poles a little later on. So, I guess I better get to work. Okay, so what we've got here is we've got three, we've got three spring poles that bent down quite a bit and it's caused the fibers on the inside of the tree to slip so they pulled against each other. It makes these actually a fairly dangerous tree to cut. It's not that you don't know which direction they're going to go. The problem is if you just try cutting them like they're a regular tree, they can barb a chair and snap. They can cause the saw to kick back and, and hurt you or even kill you. These aren't as bad as some. The tops don't go all the way to the ground. A lot of times they're bent right over like an arch. But these still are bad enough so that they, you should take some caution when you cut them. I could probably just cut these from the back side like you normally would. But uh, I figured it was a good opportunity to maybe show you folks how to cut a string pole. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take and I'm going to make three or four little scratches on the back side of this one to relieve some of the tension. And then I'm going to whittle off the inside of that. And you'll see this will slowly start to stand up straight. And this will slowly start to fall over. And we should end up with, with this, just like that. Once it's straightened out, you can cut it just like a normal tree. And you don't have to worry about it snapping and you know throwing your saw or uh, coming up hitting you in the face or whatever. So uh, spring poles can be one of the most dangerous things about running a chainsaw. So with that being said, the best way to do this, if it was a real bad spring pole, because you've got a 90 degree angle where your tree should be. If it was bent right over, you'd want to try to go to a place where it was in the apex of the turn or like the, the 45 mark, if you would. And that's where you do your work. 
in this tree that's way up there i i can't get up that high so i'm going to do it down lower but normally you do it right right where the the outside of your arch right where the right where the outside of your arch would be but this will still work so let me see if i can show you how to do that I know that went fairly well, but you see this right here? This is called barber's chair. That could have been a lot worse if you just cut through like that. This tree was here to slow it down when it fell down. That could have snapped and come way up in the air. That's why they call them spring poles. That's why you need to, you know, cut them carefully. But I didn't think that one was going to be as, as bad as the other one. And it wasn't. Okay, so I think we've got the driveway, so it's going to be passable for a while. Yep. Looks good. I'm hoping that a lot of the snow will melt here in the next few days. We're supposed to have some higher temperatures. I can't believe that it's been three days and this stuff is still clinging on the trees like it is. Most of the town is without power. Yeah. We love to feel guilty about the fact that... Uh, I do a little. <laughs> I've said that in <laughs> Being off grid, we are not most of the most of the town. We have the same we have the same power we always do. So yeah, we're good. Internet not so good, but no, the internet and, and the cell service is right in the toilet or toilet right now. And, yeah, but well, that's okay. We're good. You can't expect everything. Everything is everything's relative, you know. And uh, if living here in the woods, we have slow Wi-Fi. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> we got a lot of other things we don't have right. that I don't miss. That's right. But anyway, so with that. So this job's done. Thanks to the old steel chainsaw and the Kubota. <laughs> and the old hillbilly. And the hillbillies. Old hillbillies. We're good. Well, uh, <laughs> Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> See you next time. Bye.